So the other day I had an audience member that really didn't enjoy a talk that I was giving. Now, I could definitely have handled that better. So today, because this can happen to all of you, I wanna share with you what happened, what I did, and what I absolutely could have done better. So stick around. <laughs> that audience member didn't want to. Arr. Hey, welcome to Lead Loud. My name is Richard Mulholland. I'm the founder and chief presentation officer of Presentation Powerhouse Missing Link. I am also a public speaker that apparently not everybody enjoys. Say what? And that's okay. I always believe that you have to polarize audiences ruthlessly. You don't want to be the best. You want to be the favorites. And I'll explain that in another video. However, the other day, I was doing a presentation. It was kind of part presentation, part workshop. And it was around my book, Here Be Dragons. And I was delivering the concept. And all of a sudden, an audience member, uh, you know, when we were chatting and engaging, said that she doesn't really like the metaphor I use around the dragon. And she offered an alternative to it, as is her right. And this is where things got interesting. So after uh, addressing her question, we got into a little bit of a back and forth. And she didn't want to let go of her idea. And I guess that's fair enough. In comedy, we refer to this type of person as a heckler. And in fact, comedians are amazing at put downs of hecklers, like uh, some of my favorite examples like this. But you don't mind me sharing with the group, so it makes it much easier. We can go old school. What, sorry? Stop stalling. Stop stalling. Don't panic, sir. <laughs> I've got this. I'll have to put you on asshole waiting. <laughs> But here's the fundamental difference. They're not a heckler and you're not a comedian. When you're in a presentation space, this state is fundamentally different. It's you and the audience. The audience is a collective noun. If you attack one audience member, you're attacking the audience as a whole. That is the game when you're delivering a presentation. And it's especially true if you're presenting to people from one company as I was then. If I attack this person, put them down, put them in their place, I'm attacking everybody from that company. And that would be fundamentally wrong. So how should I have handled it? I believe there are three tactics that we can use and we follow through those tactics in order. I kind of tried to do the first two of these, but I didn't land them perfectly. And I just failed altogether to go for step number three. The first tactic is acknowledge and answer. You want to acknowledge the person that is talking to you and, and answer any questions that they have or answer the main question that they have. If they don't have a question, that's often the first sign that you've got somebody who doesn't want to learn from you. They want to tell you something. Now, a good way to handle something like that is to say, huh, that's a really interesting point. That's definitely something I'll have to ponder. Uh, thanks so much. And then move on. In this particular instance, what I might have said because of the rest of the content, I had to continue. This was in the middle of my presentation. So I had to continue talking about the very thing they were challenging. I would have probably had to go on with something like, however, for the sake of today, I'm going to have to stick with the presentation material I prepared. And I'm going to ask all of you uh, just to, to maintain an open mind around this content. Does that sound good? And the reason I have to say all of you is because it's a very, very important part and it leads into tactic number two. And that is flip the focus. Look, you need to remember something. This is a presentation, not a conversation. If you finish your answer and then you end up looking back at the person, they will see this as an invitation to reply. And then the audience is caught watching this kind of crazy ass uh, uh, tennis match between two speakers. Like... Instead, focus on somebody else in the audience. Right, so a good idea is to find somebody, if somebody else, when you were doing questions, for example, if somebody else had their hands up, you finish off with that person, you, you're getting finished the content and you turn around and, and then you turn around and say, right, and you end your point looking at somebody else. Right, does that make sense to everybody? Great. Yes, over there. And then you address that. If you didn't have somebody like that, you can finish off by doing the scan. So as you're nearing the end of your answer to that person, you're chatting to them, you're looking at them directly and you're kind of finishing your point. And then you start you know, answering the audience because remember, you're not answering a question. You're answering a question by one person, but you're not answering a question for one person. You're answering the question for everybody. So as you get to the end, you do that. And then as you finish, you say, right then. And you look around and you do that, that weird, awkward scan and that stupid look in your face. Okay, and you go over that way. 
that'll get it done. And I did this on that particular day. I even had audience members in their questions and feedback saying things like, you know, I really, really agree with you because, or I'm on your side here, I believe. And in spite of that though, instead of just letting it go, I made this rookie mistake of looking back to that audience member to see if they got it yet. Like, now do you understand? You see, I made, I mean, the embarrassing error of forgetting that I wasn't trying to move Muhammad. I was trying to move the mountain. You can't win everybody in an audience. That's not your job. The biggest single mistake I made that day is that I tried to win that person over. That's not the job. And in fact, if I do want to win that person over, there's a better time and place for that. And that kind of leads into tactic number three. Tactic number three is to delay the dialogue. Now, this step is only needed here because I failed to put a full stop on the discussion way back in step one. You see, if you have a member and you've been engaging with them, you've gone back and forward more than twice, you need to end this on behalf of everybody else in the audience. All right, zip it. You, don't, you can't even- Zip it. Zip. And you can do this by using a phrase kind of like, as follows. You would say something like, look, uh, I actually really would love to get to the bottom of this, but I want to make sure that we have the time to discuss this properly. So what I'd like to suggest is that I meet you for a cup of coffee after this and we kind of just figure this all out and you can plant this in my head. But for now, I need to move on because I've got to obviously solve this for everybody given the material that I prepared. Does that sound good? And I give them that split second look and nod, but I don't delay on them. I then turn around and immediately go to does that sound good? And of course, everybody else here is welcome to join. How does that sound? Any of you interested? Great. All right, so let's move on. And then we do. Now, that you know, ties it off, cuts it off. You've told this person you will address this later and you've kind of reminded them that you're here for everybody. You can even use a phrase like, out of respect for the rest of the audience, I don't want to get caught into a conversation here but I'd love to get into a conversation afterwards. Out of respect for the audience means that if they stop and pull back, then they're saying that they're disrespecting the audience. And at that point, by the way, the golden rule is you absolutely have to have that conversation with them. And you know what? It usually goes easier because it turns out people tend to be less competitive when they don't have an audience of their own. That's so tough now, huh? And this then brings me to the most extreme of edge cases, one that probably most of you will never experience. And that is where the person still persists, even after you've said that. It has happened to me exactly once in my 20 year speaking career. It was with an investment bank and this person was particularly cocky. And at that point, I turned around and said, listen, enough. They're actually, I actually cut them off mid-sentence. I said, enough. I'm not going into this here. I've offered you an alternative. But right now, I need to ask you either to sit down and be quiet or just to leave because clearly you don't want to be here. And the person got up and left. And as the door closed, that instant the door closed, the audience broke into applause. That person must have been dying on the other side of the door. They don't like me very much. I definitely didn't get a Christmas card after that. The principles to remember here are very, very simple. You're not there for one person. You're there for the entire audience. And you can't win an audience over by attacking a member of it. In fact, you shouldn't be trying to win over a member of an audience at all. That's not the job of a presentation. It's very, very simple. If you remember those three steps, those three tactics, tactic number one is to acknowledge an answer. Tactic number two is to flip your focus. And tactic number three is to delay the dialogue. You will have all the tools in your toolbox that you need to deal with an angry audience member. So I obviously hope this never happens to you, but if you do, you now have what you need to win back the audience and to potentially grow your authority at the same time. If you have had it happen to you in the past, I would love to hear your horror stories. Feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you have any other tips and tricks, I'd also like to hear them. I'm here to learn as much as you are. Most importantly though, never let something like this put you off delivering a great presentation because it is still the greatest gift that you can give to people. So as always, don't let them shut you down. Go out there and lead loud. And if you do get an asshole trying to shut you down, lead even louder.